Hi, this is the third lesson for the third week of April. Um, and this is absolutely, I think, one of my favorite stories I've read ever in my class. Um, so every once in a while, you come across a story where the author beautifully constructs the protagonist and the antagonist and makes them equal. Um, really hard to do as a writer. Um, and this story specifically um, was written, let me make sure I get the date right. Um, I wanna say 2000, no uh 2000s um it doesn't matter when it just matters that it's great okay so we're going to talk about um something that was actually on the last uh this month's stars test um one of the prompts for seventh grade was to compare and contrast characters um this is the best story to do that with um so what is a protagonist it is the main character who plays a meaningful and active role in the development or the plot of a story. But this is the character most followed um, by the reader, the driving force in the story, the character we want to root for. Um, and what's great about this story in particular, it follows Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. And many of you won't know what that I'm talking about until high school, but many famous movies, uh, your Star Wars series, um, a hero's journey basically creates a protagonist who comes from humble beginnings. Um, and Keevan is the youngest and the smallest in our story. And he is a foster kid, which so we know he's disadvantaged. Um, and don't we like to root for the underdog, right? Um, and there's something about being the youngest and the smallest. And I know this because I was the youngest of four uh, siblings. And the youngest has to prove a lot, uh, work a little harder than everyone else to get noticed. Um, so Kevin in this story um, is like all the teenage boys in this story, and they have a goal and they want to be a dragon rider. So this is kind of a fantasy science fiction story. Um, but to be a dragon rider, um, you have to be prepared. So they kind of go through this military boot camp in preparation. So there is a season where dragon eggs are about to hatch and every season, every hatching season, they call it an impression. The baby dragon will choose its writer. How cool is that? Um, so the story really talks about the candidates being between the ages of 12 and 19. So basically your teenagers, that's a pretty big age gap. So you can imagine the youngest, which is Kevin barely makes the cutoff. And then the oldest, who's our antagonist, um, is 19 years old. So our antagonist is the opposing character who creates the main conflict with the protagonist. They force the protagonist to push back, creating tension throughout the story, often clearly revealing the character qualities of both. Um, most of you who have been in my class a long time know I, I actually prefer the antagonist. They're the more... Uh, I don't know, juicy character, right? Um, think about superheroes. What would, you know, Spider-Man be if he didn't have a villain to push him, you know, to really m cause him to go beyond what he thought he was capable of? So in this story, Baturli is the oldest candidate of all the boys who want to become dragon riders. They want to be selected, but he's been passed over eight times. Uh, which likely means maybe there's something the dragons sense in him. So this is his last chance. This is his last opportunity uh, to be chosen by a dragon to be a dragon rider. So he's pretty desperate. So who do you think he picks on? Um, well, all of them, actually, because he's the antagonist. But of course, Kevin is um, his adversary. So... When you focus on comparing and contrasting characters, you really want to focus on their character qualities. 
So you're going to see a lot of synonyms um, in this one, and it's purposeful because synonyms matter. So for example, the character quality of admirable. If you look up synonyms for admirable, you know, you'll get uh, trustworthy, praiseworthy, commendable. Um, so you don't want to use admirable, 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 admirable. Okay. And you also don't want to use quality, 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 quality. So a trait, a characteristic, right? An aspect um, distinguishes them. Um, so we have three character qualities that we're going to prove today that are Kievan. And I'm going to spoil the story with my analysis and I'm going to apologize. And I am going to tell you that this is an 11 page story. So I'm not going to read the whole story. I will read part of the story just to kind of set it up. And then I'm going to go through kind of the character stories. And I'm also, I'm just going to share the document and kind of show you how I've color coded the story as well. Uh, so a couple of things, if you go to the end of this story, you'll notice Anna Inez McCaffrey is our author, an American author known for the Dragon Riders of Pern science fiction series. So if you like this, there's a whole series of books on this. Born in 1926, died in 2011. Um, what is astonishing about her, she won several awards, you know, for women in science fiction, it's kind of rare. First female author to win a Hugo Award for Best Novella for Dragon Rider. She was also awarded Grand Master by the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, and she was inducted into the Science Fiction Hall of Fame. So that should give you a sense of why I love this story so much. Um, so Keevan's... Um, Foster mother has a moment of foreshadowing in the story. And here's what she says. I like to believe that dragons see into a man's heart. And this is Kevin's foster mother, Mindy, telling him, if they find goodness, honesty, a flexible mind, patience, courage, and you've got that in quantity, Kevin, dear Kevin, that's what dragons look for. Um, so really interesting. Another statement she makes is, I don't believe that Falar our wear leader, so that's the leader of the wear people, was all that tall when bronze Nemeth chose him and Nemeth was the only bronze dragon of that hatching. So we have kind of a four tier level, um, I'll stop sharing for a minute, of dragons. We have the greens, we have the blues, we have the browns, which are kind of bigger. And then there's usually one bronze egg per hatching season. So this story begins where we're at we're at the tail end. Hatching season is almost upon us. The eggs, you know, are almost ready to crack open and the reveal. So we have 70 boy candidates. Yes, you heard me that correct. 70 candidates um, between the ages of 12 and 19 and 40 dragon eggs. So 30 kids will not be chosen. 30 boys. This is boys. Teenage boys will not be chosen. And that could be for a multitude of reasons. It could be um, maybe they're not ready. Maybe, you know, um, it, they just don't fit the personality of the dragon. So what's really interesting is the dragon chooses the rider. Well, Baturli in this story, you know, he's 19. He's been through season after season after season. Remember eight. He's been passed over eight times. And he's begun to kind of position himself. So he's deceptive, you know, you know, I, like I, I can choose the bronze egg is mine, you know, and the other boys aren't going to mess with him. He's manipulative, controlling. Um, and he's just a bully. He's abusive, um, verbally abusive, physically abusive, intimidating. Um, so just a great villain, right? Um, and then we have this 12 year old Kevin who is the opposite, who is the antithesis. I love that word antithesis. And all it means is opposite. Um, and he is everything he is not. He is courageous. He is persistent. He is hardworking. Whereas Baturli is deceitful, manipulative, and abusive. So I've given you actually what each of these terms means. If you're going to prove the character quality, you better know what it means. So courageous is boldly acting even when fearful or facing danger. So I've given you a textual reference because I like this part in the story. You know, Baturli is kind of like said, this is the bronze egg. It has bronze markings on it. This one's mine. And he said, nobody touch it. And Kevin, this is what the story says. This is a textual reference, smiled because he'd already touched it. 
Um, every inspection day when the others were leaving the hatching ground and no one could see him stroke, uh, crouch down to, to stroke it. I love that. He's like, you know, you don't own me. You can't tell me what to do. I think that's pretty bold. You know, what if he was caught, right? Um, persistent, stubborn and unyielding, refusing to give up. So I have to give away part of the story here and tell you that <clears throat> at the end of the story, uh, but Turley, you know, he's pretty desperate. Uh, he wants Keevan out of the picture, which means he must be intimidated by Keevan. There's something about him that he thinks I need to remove him from the competition. So while the elders are speaking, you know, there's 70 boys here. Why don't we eliminate the youngest? Maybe they're not ready yet anyway. And then the other argument is, well, why don't we eliminate the ones who haven't been chosen for eight seasons? There's a reason they haven't been chosen. So there's just a lot of conversation and they just kind of, you know, talk about it. Should we change it? Um, and nothing ever changes, just a conversation. Um, but, but Turley realizes Keevan has overheard this conversation and probably would believe him if he said, you know, they've decided, have you heard? They've decided not to let, you know, uh, maybe, you know, the younger ones go. And they have a little physical altercation. Um, you know, it happens to be while Keevan's shoveling and but Turley pushes Keevan with the shovel knocks him down, okay, cracks his skull, breaks his leg, right? You're like, wow. Um, so Baturli, and rightly so, karma um, has been disqualified. He went too far. Um, but Keevan is laid up, like he can't move. He's given pain medication and he's like, can, can I still participate? And they're like, I mean, technically, yeah, but you can't get out of bed. Why would you? Just wait, wait, wait for a season. Well, he doesn't do that. He drags his broken body, you know, pulling his broken leg and finds his way to the, the hatching grounds. Um, so twice he fell into the sand and had to pull himself up on the stick. His white tunic no longer spotless. Once he jarred himself so badly, he couldn't get up immediately. Doesn't that fit stubborn and unyielding, refusing to give up, which is the definition of persistent, right? And then lastly, hardworking. Notice the definition. Consistently willing to put forth energy into finishing a task. Keevan was constantly working twice as hard as any other boy his age to prove himself capable. What if his muscles weren't as big as Baturli's? Well, Baturli's 19. They were just as hard. And if he couldn't overpower anyone in a wrestling match, he could outdistance everyone in a foot race. You know what that says to me? This, this textual reference, it says, I'm going to compensate for what I don't have with what I do have. Huh. And I'm going to work to get it. Um, so what happens to Keevan in the end? I'm going to spoil the story, but I think you get the point. So he arrives at the hatching ground. And from his point of view, it looks like all 40 eggs have hatched and all dragons have, have picked their riders. And unbeknownst to him, he's devastated and kind of tries to hide in the shadows. There's one remaining dragon looking for his writer for his partner and life companion and it's the bronze dragon and he comes out to find Keevan um so Keevan was chosen by not the green not the blue not the brown but the bronze remember one for hatching um which was the highest honor um a bronze dragon was big those who rode them often became the wear leader so you know it's prophetic that his foster mother said, you know, there's a reason um, dragon riders are chosen and the dragon chooses them for a reason. And it's because if this is your lifelong companion, you want to know that you can trust them, that they have a good heart, that they're good, it, it, ultimately good inside. And that's what Keevan was. He was this admirable character. And that's what we're going to prove. Um, in body one, but you are going to prove it in a different way than I did. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, the antagonist, Baturli, um, he is deceitful. So look at the definition of deceitful, purposely misleading others or falsifying information. And, you know, deceitful, you know, this at school, gossiping, right? Uh, look at social media, look at uh, Photoshop, look at, you know, when you photo picture, that's deceitful, it's, you know? That's falsifying information. You're tweaking it. So um, heard the news, babe. He, he called him babe, like baby. 
but Charlie asked. He was grinning from ear to ear, and he put an unnecessary emphasis on the final insulting word. He's trying to get him to think that he's not going to be allowed to participate. So he's deceptive, uh, manipulative, cleverly controlling or influencing another. Um, I don't know why you're allowed in this impression, Kevin. There are enough of us without a babe, but Charlie said, shaking his head. Yeah, but Charlie made a show of standing in his toe steps. You can't even see over an egg hatching day. You better get in front of the dragons or, or the dragons won't see you at all. Of course, you could get run down that way in the mad scramble. Oh, I forget. You can run fast, can't you? So he's trying to control him and manipulate his thoughts. You know, get in his head. It's kind of like when you manipulate during sports, you know, that trash talk. It's like getting in the opponent's head. And it's very effective, by the way. Um, and then finally, just abusive, cruel, using offensive words and actions. Um the particular egg was the one Baturli had marked as his own, and no other candidate dared, on pain of being beaten by Baturli, at his first opportunity to approach it. So the textual reference in the story tells us Baturli has beaten up other other candidates before, not just Kevin. He it's not just Kevin he's being abusive with. He's that way with everybody. So he's just a bully. Um, so what happened to him in the end? Well, I told you he had a shoving altercation. Here's what the quote says. Batilli, Baturli will not be participating. There are certain rules that must be observed by all candidates and his conduct proves him unacceptable to the wear. So we're gonna prove that he has dishonorable character qualities, the opposite, the antithesis. Okay. Um, okay, so I wanna just briefly um, share the screen here. And I want to share with you what I did in the story, everybody. So when I ask you uh, to summarize um, three things, three points that will prove that Kevin is an admirable character, um, he's marked in red. All of these um, markings in red. So basically what I've told you is I've given you the answer. All of the uh, parts marked in blue are Baturli, okay? Uh, so I'm going to just do the story, just one page of the story, uh, The Smallest Dragon Boy by Anne McCaffrey. Although Keevan lengthened his walking stride as far as his legs would stretch, he couldn't quite keep up with the other candidates. He knew he would be teased again. Just as he knew many other things that his foster mother told him he ought not to know, Keevan knew that Baturli, the most senior of the boys, set that spank and pace just to embarrass him, the smallest dragon boy. Keevan would arrive, tail fork end of the group, breathless, chest heaving, and maybe get a stern look from the instructing wing second. Dragon riders, even if they were still only hopeful candidates for the glowing eggs which were hardening on the hot sands of the hatching ground cavern, were expected to be punctual and prepared. Sloth was not tolerated by the wear leader of Bend and Wear. A good record was especially important now. It was very near hatching time when the baby dragons would crack their mottled shells and stagger forth to choose their lifetime companions. Excuse me. The very thought of that glorious moment made Keevan's breath catch in his throat. To be chosen, to be a dragon rider, to sit astride the neck of a winged beast with jeweled eyes, to be his friend in telepathic communion with him for life, to be his companion in good times and fighting extremes, to fly effortlessly over the lands of Pern or thrillingly between to any point anywhere on the world. Flying between was done on dragonback or not at all, and it was dangerous. Keevan glanced upward past the black mouths of the weir caves in which grown dragons and their chosen riders lived toward the star stones that crowned the ridge of the old volcano that was bend and wear. On the height, the blue watched dragon, his rider mounted on his neck, stretched the great transparent pinions that carried him on the winds of Pern to fight the evil thread that fell at certain times from the skies. The many faceted rainbow jewels of his eyes glistened fleetingly in the greeny sun. He folded his great wings to his back and the watch pair resumed their statue-like pose of alertness. So you can see here, um, the dragon riders had, you know, kind of a military-esque position. They were the protectors. Um, then the enticing view was obscured as Kevin passed into the hatching ground cavern. The sands under hot were underfoot were hot, even through heavy wear hide boots. How the bootmaker had protested having to sew so small. Kevin was forced to wonder why being small was reprehensible. People were always calling him babe and shooting him, shooing him away as being too small or too young for this or that. Kevin was constantly working twice as hard as any other boy his age to prove himself capable. What if his muscles weren't as big as Batarli's? They were just as hard. And if he couldn't overpower anyone in a wrestling match, he could outdistance anyone in a foot race. 
Okay, so what I hope I've done is I've made you want to read more. It is 11 pages. I know it's long. And I wish I had time to read the whole thing. But I hope that I grabbed your attention enough to want to read it. Um, and I will know by your response if you read it. Um, because I can tell already by the responses. Okay, so what you're going to do um, in your essay response, we're going to start from the middle. Uh, we're going to compare and contrast our protagonist and our antagonist. Okay, so on your outline, uh, which you should have in, you know, pulled up while you're watching this, we're going to prove body one, the protagonist in the story, Kevin, demonstrated admirable character qualities, which was why he was chosen by the bronze dragon. I think I am going to share this because I think I messed up on my, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Scroll down. Because I forgot to write. Fix this right now. There we go. Okay. Um, so the protagonist in the story, Keevan, which I already kind of told you what we're going to prove, demonstrated admirable character qualities, um, which is why he was chosen by the bronze dragon. Okay. So I want to note you to show, show you something here. Admirable character I have here, right? You probably see that. One identifiable trait. Notice I am purposely not using the same words. Um, and that's the number one mistake kids make. Admirable, 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 admirable. Quality, 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 quality. Um, one identifiable trait he showed was courage. Your job is to back this up. Explain any incident in the story which showed uh, Kevin to be brave. Anything you want. Make sure you are giving me the context of the story. And I don't want to quote. I don't want a textual reference. I want you to use your own words. A second, notice these words, and yes, you may use these, extraordinary attributes shown by Kevin was how he was hardworking. Again, not the same wording at all. Explain any incident in the story which showed him that he worked hard. And it could be something that you have connected. Um, finally, a third way he was distinguishable from others was his persistence. Um, again, any incident in the story which showed him refusing to back down or give up. And I think that's what I loved about his character the most. The reason Kevin stood out um, to the bronze dragon is because he uh, possesses all the admirable marks of a trustworthy writer. Um, so a little bit of repetition there, but at least it's only twice. Okay. The antagonist in the story, but was the antithesis. And all that means is opposite of Keevan showing deplorable character qualities. Love that word, which was why he was passed over eight times during the selection process. So one despicable tendency, and yes, you may use these words of the, of his was to be deceptive with his peers. Now, I, I, other kids have done this essay, so I will tell you, make sure you understand what deceptive means. And I gave you the definition. Um, so any incident in the story to show him to be deceptive, and that means just falsifying or, you know, trying to make others believe something that's not true. Um, a second dishonorable aspect to his character was how he manipulated. Uh, manipulated is a little bit different from deception. Deception is outright, you know, lying, falsifying. Um, manipulation is more control. And if you're 19, you've got a lot of control over everyone. You're the oldest. Um, any incident in the story would show he purposely maligned others to get what he wanted. And finally, a third reprehensible tendency he had was to abuse and, and bully others. Um, this is going to be the easiest one because he's a bully, right? Any incident where he picked on someone and it I mean, it doesn't have to be Paterly. It could be, I mean, Kevin, it should be probably. The dragons must have sensed his unpardonable character, which was why he was never chosen before. And you could even put here and disqualified. Well, he was never chosen before. Um, okay, so let's go to the thesis. When it comes to brilliant characterization, the fantasy story, The Smallest Dragon Boy by Anne McCaffrey depicts two opposing characters, the protagonist, Kevin, and the antagonist, Baturli, as they fight each other in the attempt to become chosen as dragon writers. So we'll go to the uh, restated thesis. Because of the commendable character qualities demonstrated by Kevin, the protagonist, he wins out over the contemptible Baturli and is, ooh, typo, not only chosen to be a dragon rider, but wins the favor of the bronze dragon. Okay, so I'm going to stop share there. 
because uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can read along. Okay, so this is pretty much um, the essay. For those of you who are doing a lead and a conclusion, you would summarize an 11 page story in the lead. So I'm gonna do this for you at the end and hope that you will log off and read the story. It is incredible. Um, the story is set in a fantasy world of the where people. Young teen boys are groomed as candidates to become the next group of dragon riders. This hatching season, as the dragon eggs prepare to crack, 70 boys of various ages wait to see if they will be chosen by a dragon to be their life companion. Keevan, the main character, is the youngest and smallest of all and eagerly awaits to see if he will be chosen by one of the 40 dragons which will hatch. However, Keevan struggles when an older adversary, Baturli, not only attempts to undermine his confidence, but they have a physical altercation which could stop Keevan from achieving his dream of becoming a dragon rider. Okay, so then we'll go to the conclusion um, here. Um, and you'll summarize really um, how it, it ended. The surly and defensive character of Baturli served as an important contrast to the young idealistic Keevan. The older and desperate Baturli, who had not been chosen eight times to be in a dragon rider, will stop at nothing to hold Keevan back. The fact that Keevan is younger makes it easy for Baturli to pick on him. The problem occurs when Baturli goes too far. Oh, sorry. However, Keevan's determination and bravery could not be outmatched even by the harassment of the older Baturli. The problem occurs when Baturli goes too far with his bullying and hurts Keevan. This disqualified Baturli from being allowed to be considered a dragon rider. At the end of the story, an injured Keevan refuses to be left out and manages to drag his way to the hatching grounds only to find all of the dragon eggs have already hatched. Unbeknownst to Keevan, the bronze dragon had been searching for his rider and eventually finds Keevan despondent in the shadows. Keevan wins in the end, having been chosen by the only bronze dragon who knew he could trust him. So you'll notice <coughs> it should be pretty extensive. Um, even if I'm giving you the topic sentence and the end sentence, which you should be using. Um, and I'm okay with you using one, three, and five. Modify it a little bit, but go ahead and use the specific word choice because I was explaining to you, it's really, really important not to be repetitive. Okay. Um, so your job is at this point uh, to read the story and you're doing yourself a serious disservice if you don't. And I promise you, I'll be able to tell in your essay that you read it or didn't read it. It it comes across, always does. Um, it is a fantastic story, beautifully written, beautiful characterization. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do because next month, spoiler, we're going to do a couple more fantasy stories. I really enjoyed this genre and I haven't done it before. So this concludes um, lesson three um, on the smallest dragon rider uh, for April. Um, thank you for watching and please submit your essay as soon as possible uh, so we can start fresh in May. Have a great day.